Hello and welcome to the GraphQL tutorial. In this video, we're gonna focus more on coding. We'll create first GraphQL API endpoint. Let's get started from creating request model in order to use it later in the request. What is great that GraphQL doesn't need many different request models because we've got only one endpoint. I'll create it in the utilities class inside models folder. GraphQL query as a name will be appropriate. It consists of properties which in fact are GraphQL elements. You can learn about all of them in my previous video. So first we've got the operation name. It's the name of the query. Then we have the query, the body of the request where user determines which properties he wants to fetch. And at the end, we need to specify property for variables passed by the user. Okay, when we have it, we can now use it. So let's create a new controller. I will call it GraphQL controller and make it inherit from a controller. For an API endpoint, we need to set the route. In my case, I'll use the name of the controller and I also recommend you to do it that in that way. Inside of it, we can create a constructor and let's leave it empty for now. Let's jump to the method for handling requests. It will be marked with HTTP POST because we need to pass an object inside the body of the request. I'll make it asynchronous and it will return an action result to give the consumer of the API clear information about the status of the request. So as a parameter, we put the query model. At the beginning, it is good to make a null check for the query. If the query does not pass the check, we should throw an argument null exception with the name of the query. With that check made, and with being sure that user really sends some data, we can try to select the variables from the query. So just call on the variables the two inputs method. And that's because it is a JSON object and GraphQL library accepts it in that format. We haven't yet added GraphQL package to our project and that's the perfect time to do it because the two inputs method needs it. Now it's time to create execution options object. That's a special GraphQL class which has properties which are used during execution of the query. So we need to fill three properties, the schema, the query and inputs. Query and inputs we already have, so we are missing the schema only. We'll use dependency injection and inject it inside the constructor of this class. I'll later create a dependency injection container to register it. And also at the same time, let me add the iDocument executor to use it in the future. Just as always, assign the variables to instantiate them. In the execution options object, we can now easily assign properties. Just remember that the query is in object query property query, so it needs to be query.query. .query. Okay, when we've got the execution model, we should now execute it. For this, I have created the document executor and it has one method that we need. Execute async. Just pass the options inside of it and we should get the result that we want. So here, the last check if our result has errors. If it has, we should return bash request Otherwise, we can return the OK method with 200 status code and pass the result as a parameter. Now, it's the time to look under the hood of it and configure more GraphQL classes. But here is one thing still missing before we go to GraphQL. We need to specify the repository methods that will get the data from the database. We'll need them later when specifying which operation we will choose on which query. So we're gonna have two repositories, payment repository and property repository. Both gonna be in data access project. So let me add their folder called repositories. 
we can start the implementation from creating interfaces to them. The iPayment repository and iProperty repository. Just add two classes and change them to public interfaces. And at the end, you can remove the unused using libraries. For now, we're gonna focus on the property repository and we can create there the first method which will return collection of properties as i enumerable. I will call it get all. It's like a standard. Jumping to the implementation, to the property repository, just create a new class and inherit from our interface. Of course, we need to implement get all method. We will be fetching data from the database, so we need to add database context. R is called real estate context. Standard injection into constructor and inside the get all method we return db context dot properties. It will be the whole db set of properties that we have. We must register the repositories in the startup class in order to use them. Inside the configure services method I will add the property repository as transient. When you are registering as transient, a new instance will be provided to every controller and every service. Also, we already have used the iDocument executor and didn't register it. Let me fix it. It can be registered as singleton. At the end, add using GraphQL and it should be working. The next thing that we need to do in order to create our first GraphQL request is to add the property type. This type will describe which fields we want to return if user asks for them. Let me first remove this default class here and add our own. The property type. Let's make it public and it will inherit from object graph type with property as a generic parameter. We can call the parameterless constructor and inside of it call the field method for each field in the model. So starting with the ID, next the name, the value of the property, city where property is placed, the family which lives in this property and on which street it is located. We won't be returning the payments for now, we will focus on this feature in the future. We are on a good way to finish configuration of the API in order to create the first request. There are only two things left, the query and the schema. We'll focus now on the query, because schema consists of queries, so we need to have them first. So let me add new folder to the API project. I'll call it queries and inside of it create class called property query. It also needs to be public and inherit from object graph type. We need to inject inside the constructor the property repository. We'll use it to resolve the queries. Okay, so we've got the field method here also, but now we'll use the generic version. I'll pass as the generic parameter list of properties because it will handle the get all method, so we need to return a collection. In GraphQL, lists are converted to list graph type. Other types you can find in the documentation, but we'll use some of them during this course. So the first parameter of this method takes the name of the query. I'll call it properties, 
So whenever user creates a GraphQL query named properties, it will be handled by this method. The second parameter describes how to resolve the query. I want to resolve it with the get all function from our repository. And we have configured our first query. Let's add it to the scheme. Okay, so another folder called schema. And as you may have thought, we need to add inside of it a class called real estate schema. It will inherit from schema from the GraphQL package and needs to take I dependency resolver as a constructor parameter. We need to pass it to the base class. Okay, so we've got here the query property and I will assign the property query that we have just created with the resolver that resolve method. So we've got our schema configured. We can do small cleanup like remove the unused references and remove the values controller from controllers folder. We don't need it. And at the end, we need to register types that we have just created in the startup class. So jumping to the configure services method, let's start with property query. I will register it as a singleton because we only need one instance per lifetime scope. And exactly the same with the property type. And now our schema, but here it gets a little bit more complicated. First, we need to get the service provider from the build service provider method and then register the I schema as our real estate schema. But in order to do so, first we need to give the parameter for the I dependency resolver as you see in this window. We can resolve it using the func dependency resolver and using the get service method. Basically, the func dependency resolver inherits from I dependency resolver, so we are registering it at the same time. Yeah, it might look kind of complicated, but it is just more advanced dependency resolving. At the end, just add to the configure method use GraphQL function in order to open our app in GraphQL, which is an API request helper like Postman. It is underlined because we haven't added GraphQL package yet. Let's do it. Okay, here it is with this pink icon. Just install it. Here, click accept in order to get this package. Yep, and after a while we got it. So now add using GraphQL to remove the underline from this method and at the end remove the unused references. I think that we are ready to try and see how it works. We can run this app by clicking this green button with IIS Express. It will run on a local on-demand server. At first, it might look like it doesn't work, but we need to go to the GraphQL address. So in the search bar, after the port, type GraphQL and you will see GraphQL window. We can remove those comments that are written here and create our own query. Each query needs to begin with a curly braces. The first string properties is our query that we want to call. And inside the curly braces, we can specify which fields we want to get with property query. Let's start with name. We can execute the query with this play button. Yeah, but something went wrong. We should debug it and see what's going on. Let's add a breakpoint inside the controller and one more time run this query. We can skip these first fields and go directly to the result execution. Probably 
we have some errors here. Oh no, we are calling a method a null, so it is throwing null reference exception. Fortunately, it will be easy to fix. We need to add the question mark to check if it is null, and then we can check if there are more than zero elements with the count parameter. Now it should be working. Let's try it. Okay, so go to the GraphQL and you've got our query prepared. Yeah, now it's working, but I suppose that we haven't added so many houses. Probably something went wrong with our database seed. Let's check it. Yeah, we haven't added here the explanation mark to negate it. So the data was inserted into database each time we run our app. I have tested it a lot before, so I have had so much more data. Okay, so we need to clean the database to have real data for the future. We can use the SQL Server Explorer. I've got it on the left panel, but you can find it inside the View tab. And now find out our database, click view data and just remove it. First, we need to remove payments because they are dependent on properties, so the relation cannot be broken. Then go to properties and also remove all of them. And now, after we run the application, we should have only three properties and everything should be working. Okay, looks perfect. That's all in this video. We did a really good job. At the beginning of this video, we just had database configured and now we discovered every GraphQL element and implemented it. And finally, we finished our first query. If you like this video, don't hesitate to subscribe to be up to date with newest content.